Okay, let's continue on. Module one, part three. Let's talk about now, we talked earlier, when we measure angles, we can measure angles in degrees or radians. Matter of fact, we talked about, if we go all the way around a circle, we said that angle will be 360 degrees, and then we learned about radians, where we said, if you go all the way around the circle, the angle measured in radians is two pi. Right, if there's no unit here, we know that means radians. And I said, you'll find it helpful just for fun if I divide both sides of these by two. I can say actually 180 degrees equals pi radians. Now, this is the key, because the next thing we're going to learn is, we're going to take angles and degrees... And we need to figure out what the same angle is going to be in radians. And actually, this is not very hard. Matter of fact, I'll just do some examples you'll see pretty quickly. So, for instance, sixty degrees will equal what in radians? Now. From a couple lectures ago, you might remember this on my special angles, but let me pretend I don't know the answer to this because I want to show you how to do it mathematically because you can't always do these in your head. What you do is we're trying to convert. Once again, this is a unit conversion, something you learn to do in math all the time. For a unit conversion, you write down what you start with, and then you're going to have a fraction and you look at your units first. I'm beginning with degrees. Whatever unit you're beginning with goes in the bottom. In the top is the unit you're trying to get to. Just to make it clear, I'll go ahead and write radians here. And then inside the, this is called a unit fraction, you say what's the relationship between Radians and degrees. Well, we know there are, and this is where this comes in key, there are pi radians 180 degrees. Now, just, uh, just out of interest, do you know this fraction here is called a unit fraction? And the reason it's called it is because this fraction really equals 1. Pi radians is the same as 180 degrees. If we look here, this whole thing really equals 1. If we were to get the same units in the top and the bottom, it equals 1. So when I multiply 60 degrees by this fraction, I'm not changing the actual size of my angle. I'm just changing the units. It's just like if I were to say, let's convert 30 minutes into seconds my unit fraction would be minutes in the bottom, seconds in the top. I know there are 60 seconds in one minute, right? 60 seconds in one minute are the same. So when you have two things that are the same divided, this equals one, and then you would have like, I think, 1,800 seconds. So we've converted 30 minutes into 1,800 seconds. This is the same time, just different units. Here, the same angle, just different units. So the units are going to be radians. Matter of fact, I'm not going to write radians here now. I wrote it here just so it's obvious, but the degrees cancel out. I'm left with radians. 60 or 180 is one third. 60 or 180 is a three in the bottom. What you end up with is pi over three radians. And by the way, this is called, you're going to see this in this class, an exact answer. They like exact answers and trig. They do not want you to go take your calculator. You know, you could say, well, what is pi divided by 3? 
And you could say, well, it's 1.047. But you know what? If you look at the number here, there's a bunch of other numbers here, so you have to cut them off, and you have to sort of round or estimate. When you write pi over 3, because we leave this as pi, this is called an exact answer. We've not had to round off or cut anything. So this is very common. You just leave your answer as pi over 3 radians. Do not convert it into a number unless they tell you to. Let's do another couple quick examples. What if I want to convert 150 degrees into radians? 150 degrees. Start with degrees. Degrees in the bottom. Radians in the top. Lots of relationship. There are pi radians. 180 degrees. This time... 150 over 180, if you divide by 10, that's like 15 over 18 times pi. If I divide by 3, if I keep reducing, looks like 5, 6 pi. Sometimes they may write it 5 pi over 6. These are the same. 150 degrees equals 5 pi over 6 radians. Just for fun, what would negative 45 degrees be? Well, the negative just means you go in the other direction. I don't really care about the negative. I'm just going to convert degrees, degrees, radians, pi radians, 180 degrees. 45 over 180 turns out to be 1 fourth. This ends up being negative pi over 4. Now here's an example. If they gave you this problem, they would probably say, they, well, just let me, let's just do this one, and you'll see. I'll explain it in a minute. So I'm going to convert this into radians. Start with degrees. Degrees in the bottom. Radians in the top. Pi radians. 180 degrees. Now this is an example, if I were to look at 107 or 180, it does not reduce, does not simplify. I could write my answer 107 or 180 times pi. That would be an exact answer. But oftentimes in problems like this, where the numbers don't reduce at all, they're sort of big and messy, you'll see they'll ask, write your answer round it off to two decimal places. When they say that, they're telling you, hey, go ahead, grab your calculator, and do this calculation. When they tell you to give the answer rounded to some decimal places, they're basically saying, all right, go ahead and do the math. So that would take 107 times pi divided by 180 and if I rounded it, I would say like 1.87 radians. So sometimes they will have you round and give the answer as a decimal. But oftentimes they'll want an exact answer. It's just according to what they ask for. Now let's go the other way. How about we're given an angle in radians and we're asked what would it be in degrees? All right. You're not going to find this very hard because you just follow the same pattern. So they say pi over 6 equals how many degrees? You do the same thing. Pi over 6, I'll write it here just to make it obvious. That's pi over 6 radians. To convert, I have my unit fraction. Radians, I start with. Radians go in the bottom. I'm trying to get to degrees. Degrees go on the top. What's the relationship between degrees and radians? We know there's pi radians, 180 degrees. So for the units, the radians cancel out. My answer is in degrees. Now what's interesting, I've got a pi on the top and a pi on the bottom. Those cancel out. So we're left with 180 over 6, which is 30. 
So basically, pi over 6 radians equals 30 degrees. Let's do another one. 7 pi over 3 radians equals how many degrees? A unit fraction. I write radians here. I'm starting with radians. Radians go in the bottom. I'm trying to get to degrees. It goes in the top. What's the relationship between degrees and radians? 180 degrees and pi radians. Now the math here, first of all, units. Of course, I'm left with degrees. The pi's cancel out. So I got 7 times 180 divided by 3. Actually, 180 divided by 3 is 60. So 60 times 7, I believe, if I didn't mess up in my head, it'd be 420 degrees. If you think about this, that's one trip all the way around, which is 360 plus 60 more. And if you look at 7 pi over 3, it makes sense. All right, so not too difficult. Now, one last or another thing to cover. Remember back when we first were talking about we said distance r here, and we talked about arc length, and we said there's this equation, s equals r theta, but be careful, 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 if you ever want to use this formula, now you're going to understand this. I said this before, but if you ever use this formula, when you plug in your angle, the angle has to be in radians. If you plug in an angle, if you plug in like 30 degrees and if your angle, your answer will be incorrect. If you're given a problem and they give you the angle in degrees, you have to first convert that angle in degrees to radians, and then once you have any radians, you can plug that number in and do the calculation. So it's pretty straightforward. And the homework, they're going to give you some problems, so they're going to say the angle is pi over 3, and they're going to say the radius is 4 feet, and they're going to say what would be the arc length? So what's the arc length if you got a if you got a four foot radius? So say that's four feet, and you sweep it pi over three, which is about to right here. Pi over three, and they're saying what is that distance going to be? Well, just use the formula. S equals R theta, 4 feet times theta. Since it's in radians, I go ahead and plug it in. And this is a case where they, they will want you to do the calculation and maybe round it to two decimal places, we'll just say. So 4 times pi divided by 3 equals... 4.19 feet. So that's how far this distance is for that. Just for fun, what if I say Oh, let's do this. Let's just say They give you a problem, they say, we got this angle, 45 degree angle. The arc length is two meters. How long would the radius be for that? So if you try and draw a picture, say, I know the angle's right here, that's 45 degrees. And they say, this distance here is two meters. What would the radius be? Well, I know S equals R theta. If I want to solve for R, R equals S over theta. But be careful now. Remember this equation. 
theta has to be in radians. First thing I have to do is convert 45 degrees into radians, right? So degrees in the bottom, radians in the top, 180 degrees pi radians. Turns out when you do the math, you get pi over 4 radians. So now r equals 2 meters over pi over 4. All right, this is sort of like an interesting, make sure you can do this on your calculator. I'm going to take pi divided by 4, put that in my denominator, times 2 equals 2.55. So the radius is like 2.55 meters. All right. And then there's one last equation. I'm not even going to actually do any problems because it's so simple. Sometimes when you sweep out with the radius r, so this is theta and this is s, Sometimes what they like to know is they like to figure out the area. It's like the area that's swept out. They don't just want the arc length. They want this area. And there's actually an equation. One thing you have to memorize. The area swept out by this line is one-half r squared theta. So if you know the radius, and if you know the angle swept out, once again, for this equation, theta has to be in radians. All right, very straightforward equation. I don't even need any examples. Just plug and chug. All right, let's stop now because the next topic in module one is something pretty different. So we'll start afresh.